So, without further ado, I'd like to introduce Tom. Tom goes to be able to walk through this with us. Thank you. All right, thanks, guys. Can you hear me okay? Everybody hear me okay? All right. So, I've got up there, how many of you guys remember Family Circus? Family Circle? Yeah, where when you're a kid, you're thinking about um, when you grow up, you're going to have a million, a billion dollar company, you're going to you know, drive nice cars and do all those things. When you finally get there, you're thinking about sitting back and relaxing and spending more time having fun. And I would consider that as part of your family. What I've done since 2002 is kind of put this together in a way um, to develop your personal brand. Usually I have to explain what a brand is, but I think I'm, I'm fairly confident that most, if not all of you, know all that stuff. What you might not fully get is that personal brand. And it's not just, you know, Kim Kardashian as her brand or any other uh, annoying um, celebrity as their brand. It's who you are. It's when somebody thinks of you, what are they thinking about? You know, besides your looks, are they thinking of you as being honest and forthright? Are they thinking of you and your business? Are they thinking of you as being able to, uh, uh, oh, we can always rely on them to volunteer to help us out, or we can always get that job from them much quicker than anybody else and maybe pay a little bit more. So that's kind of what I'm going to talk about. And what I've put together is what I call the brand system, B-R-A-N-D. We don't have time to go through all of it exclusively, but I'm going to touch on most of it. B are your beliefs. And we'll, we'll spend a lot of time on this, your talents, knowledge, skills, the things that you probably don't write down about yourself, uh, the things that um, you, people think about you, the things that you think of yourself. R is how you represent those beliefs. It's the marketing of your brand. It's, it's um, you know, if you write down that you have family values, but you never spend time at home, you're not representing the, the, the belief that you have. A is autonomy, or it's the control of your brand. Doing things that are in line with what it is that you do. So, an example I use, I, I love sports. Uh, I like hanging out with my family. So I was always the coach of my kids' teams. If I actually knew the sport, I would probably be a head coach. If it was baseball, I'd be the guy that would have to kind of lob pitches at people because I'm not really that much into baseball, at least not in the beginning. And then N is networking. Uh, how do you get out and, and, and bring that brand to the world? Not just your business, but your personal brand. And then D is differentiation. How do you differentiate, not just from your competition, but how do you differentiate from the person that just had a conversation? Or if you're at a networking event, how do you differentiate yourself from the, the last person that spoke. So this speaking spot is probably the worst speaking spot. Second only maybe to right after lunch, because right now you've got Coca-Cola and bread fighting inside of you <laughs> between wanting to fall asleep and jump up and down. So what I want to do is have you guys stand up for a second. Everybody stand up if you can. I want you to turn to somebody close to you, uh, whether you know them or not, and just the two of you, and if, if, it, uh, if it doesn't work out and there's not two of you, then three of you, all I want you to do is to introduce yourself, even if you know each other, in less than 10 seconds, meaning what you do, like if someone said you, you, you never met the person before, what do you do? Please don't just say I do screen printing. <laughs> what is it that you do? And I'll give you a minute or two to, to discuss amongst yourselves. Ten seconds each. <laughs> Alright, before you sit down, what I want you to do is everybody raise both 
hands up in the air and stretch. And if you want to, you can bring your hands down to your feet and touch your toes. And now you can sit down. The good and bad part about a presenter doing that is that now it's all to me. So if, I, if you fall asleep, that's my fault. I can't blame the, the lunch anymore. So think about what you just said. I saw a couple of high fives, a couple of handshakes. That's all great. We're going to get to that again at the end. I wanted to do it now just to kind of get you off your feet and uh, get the, 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 the caffeine rolling as opposed to the, uh, the carbs going. So the, the first part is uh, the B, you know, the beliefs. Uh, talents, knowledge, skills. And on your handout, it asks, what talents do you have? And what I'd like you to do is take a, a, a few seconds to think about that and then write down your talents. It doesn't have to do with your business. If you're a good athlete, that's great. Write that down. What I call a talent, while you're thinking about this, what I call a talent is something that you're really good at, but you never sat down or figure out and learn. So something you really were good at, but you never sat down and learned. Some people are talented at being great spellers. They never actually studied it, they just know how to spell things. Um, the example I use is my, my son, when he was three years old, picked up a wiffle ball bat and a wiffle ball threw it up in the air and hit it. He didn't get that from me. So I would say that he's athletic and he's talented at being athletic. Something very easy, he doesn't need to be taught and he just does it. Get out there, run with the ball, throw the ball. He just does it. Now my second one wasn't athletic and I had to teach him everything, but we'll get to that in a second. So write down just a couple of things. There's two lines there. Next one on here is knowledge. What knowledge do you have? The way I consider knowledge is, you know, the stuff that you learn. If you went to school for marketing, you have knowledge of marketing. If you're, obviously, you're screen printing, if, if that is something you're knowledgeable about, that's something you can write. But think about it on your personal side, too. What are you knowledgeable about? What's, what's something you're very knowledgeable about? So, taking my son's example, he can throw the ball up in the air, hit the ball with the wiffle ball doesn't mean that he knows baseball. He had to practice it, he had to learn it a little bit more, learn some of the stats, learn some of the techniques, learn some of those things. He became very knowledgeable at baseball. Write down just a couple of things. They don't have to coincide with your talents. And then lastly here, uh, what are you skilled at? So you may have gone to school and gotten a marketing degree, but now you're printing t-shirts, not using any of that marketing stuff. There you go, there's the guy. There's always somebody in the room when I use that example of whatever industry I'm presenting again. You're not, you're, you're knowledgeable, but you're not skilled. But now, what are you skilled at? What is something that you've been practicing and working on and, and doing over and over again that just becomes secondhand? Uh, how many of you wrote down goals for 2019? You wrote down your business goals, personal goals? Great. How many of you have done something like this in the past where you've written down your beliefs and a little bit more? Great. When I first started doing this, everybody would raise their hand about goals and nobody would write down anything about would raise their hand about themselves. What are some of the things that maybe you've heard about yourself that you're not really sure? I don't know how they got that idea. Think about that because that's part of your branding. When something is out there about you that you really can't back up in any possible way. And then the last one on this are your values. What do you value most? I mentioned family values, spending time with your family. That's important, write it down. If it's not, that's okay too, Every, to each their own. No stretching now, you had your opportunity before. <laughs> Anybody have any questions on, on the, the, the beliefs side of thing? This is for you. Your job, your homework assignment is to review this. Add to it, subtract from it. So in going from your, your beliefs to how you represent those beliefs, um, we were talking about the, the family values and um, 
when you're balancing family and life, and I, I hate PowerPoints, so is this all on a PowerPoint, you'll all get it, but it's the same thing as the, the handouts. When you're representing yourself as a personal brand, what are some of the things that you can do that not only represents you, but also represents your business? And this one's not rhetorical. Does anybody have any ideas of what you might be able to do outside of business that can also represent your business? Yeah. Throw a hell of a party. Throw a hell of a party, yeah. And design a t-shirt to go with that party to hand out to everybody. That also has your logo, your website, and all that other cool stuff, right? <laughs> what else can you do? Coach baseball. In town. Coach baseball. Hey, there's an idea. I was talking before how, to somebody that um, I got some of my best deals. I've been in sales, small business owner my whole life. Some of the best deals I ever got was coaching somebody's kid or in the stands watching somebody's kid. When, when they ask you what you do, you know, I, my little name tag here says I'm a business strategist. The hell's a business strategist? That is what I want them to ask. Because they just engaged me in conversation and they just asked me a little bit more about what I did. If I just said, I'm in sales, <laughs> they'll run. When I was in financial services, they run. But a business strategist, what the hell does that mean? What does that mean? I can talk to them a little bit more about that. And that's when you do get, to get the business. What else can you do? Yeah, we host uh, trivia nights and comedy nights. Sure. And how do you promote that with your business? Uh, within associations. Within the, uh -huh. But you can brand it, print up a bunch of t-shirts, and everybody leaves home with, with, with a gift. You know, things like that. What else can you do? Yeah. Uh, Concord. Oh, wait. You, you were both in the exact same line with my exact same point. I'm going to go with you first. Uh, constant branding. This is what I wear every day. Every day. Yeah. Every day. Go out to the ball. This is what I wear. If I go somewhere exactly. nice, maybe... You know. <laughs> I, I find a way to throw it in. Always promoting, always promoting the brand. I, I wasn't going to tell the story, but I, I, I always wear something that has our logo on it. It's got the GLR logo. I always wear it. I actually like camp shirts. Um, I got a bit of a weight problem, so I like to wear the shirts you know, on the outside usually. It, to me, it covers it up, and the camp shirts it look real nice. So I was going to wear that, and I asked my wife, and I said, well, Go back and forth. She's like, you got to wear the camp shirts. It's a t-shirt organization. They, they print shirts for a living. They're going to love you. I'm like, I know, but I'm the presenter. I should wear a collared shirt and a jacket. I was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> it's in the car. I changed. So, I don't know. It's not always great. Uh, you had a, another idea behind you. I'm sorry? Serve and support. Serve and support. Uh, like it's starting a charity or, or something like that. Um, one of the ways that you can do that is there are service clubs where you don't have to actually start the charity. The service clubs like Rotary and Lions, they all have these different events. There's Rotary Fest and Lions beer tents and things like that that all have opportunities for, you know, printing of shirts and other, you know, things that, that you can be a part of and, and do. So, what, anybody else? Be a part of the events. Did, Sure. Yeah, definitely. All that stuff. So when you're representing your brand, uh, what I'm trying to do is to show you that you can get your family and your family values involved with some of that stuff. So on there, there's just a, a few lines for you to recognize, you know, what, what are some of the things that you can do? What can you walk out of here and, and recognize? We, um, I, I'm part of the, the Rotary, we're just in Schaumburg, and one of the uh, Rotarians is the, the printer of the group. And we were both talking about how me as working and getting business for an accounting firm and him doing printing, we get most of our closed business from the people in our rotary. And it's the only networking event where I don't stand up and say, hi, my name is Tom Ghosh, I want to sell you accounting services. Because I don't say that at other things. But why? Because we all work on the same stuff. We go and we volunteer at different places and you start to talk to people and you get to know people and all that volunteering. Um, doing the, the, the coaching, you know, print up t-shirts for the kids. I, I, I bet you guys can do that fairly inexpensively and make a cool looking shirt where people will say, where'd you get that? And you know, either on the back there's your website or something like that. I know a lot of these are, are things that you probably already are doing. Be more conscious with it. Put it as part of your plan. Make it as, as part of your expense line item 
for marketing and promotion, not just, you know, ah, they're, they're coming after me again with shirts. Get involved with it so that you're, you're, you're part of it. The next one, yeah. Yeah, I would say like this year we did around 30 uh, youth baseball teams uh -huh. and then soccer teams and stuff like that. We do all of them for free. Like everyone in our area knows if you want some free uniforms, you come to us. And like, you know, they just get cotton shirts. So it's very inexpensive for us to do. Mm -hmm. And we have people that come to us and say, you know, we're tired of seeing your name on everything, but you know what? They came to us. Sure. And <laughs> it doesn't cost us but a few thousand dollars, and it's, it, that marketing goes a really long way. It really can. It really can. And then you'll get the, the people, if you're in the right area, their kids are owning businesses. Their kids are, you know, sponsoring golf outings and different things that where you'll actually get somebody to pay for your work. So autonomy is the control of your brand kind of a, a neat little lead in is make sure that the stuff that you're doing supports your brand, your personal brand. So there's different things that come up that you, you need to, to miss, you know, a baseball game or a kid's party or something like that. Um, but one of the things that I, I talk to people about when we're talking about the work bet life balance is how many of you use a, a calendar, a schedule, to schedule all your appointments, things like that. Okay. So when you're networking or you get your, you know, the Chamber of Commerce sends out their stuff, you go and you write down or type in all of the different things you're going to do that month and you put it on your calendar and it's there. And then you can schedule around it, right? Because if you're going to this banquet hall for a luncheon, you can go to a meeting nearby and, and do all that stuff, right? You can also schedule and put on your schedule all the personal stuff. So the baseball games, the water polo matches, the, the traveling to whatever you're going to be doing, and you can build your, uh, you build your appointments around that. So the example that I can use here is my son is a water polo player. And Conant, they make state every year in water polo, and this is finally his senior year. He's finally going to be able to shine. And Bruce asked if, if we could present here today and it's a water polo, summer water polo tournament. It's tonight and tomorrow. So it's on the schedule. It was on the schedule. When did we schedule this? Six, eight months ago. So it was there. So I, I kind of, yeah, I can do it. This is really important. What a great opportunity for GLM and everything like that and to, to teach. And then, thank goodness, he asked, what days and times are best for you? <laughs> <sighs> <laughs> Friday during the day will be perfect because I need to be home back there by six o'clock at night. I can't do any of it tomorrow because there's water polo games all day and I'm the guy that is the, the cheerleader of the team. Cougar polo. I'm not there. Nobody's going to do that. In, well, they, they probably will. It was on the schedule. Now, if he said, you know what, the only time I can do this is 2 o'clock on a Saturday. That's when I use the strategy matrix that's on your sheet. Okay, I have an opportunity to be in front of 80 or so business owners. I, I'm not good at crowd counting. Um, I'm not the only one, I guess. Um, but I'm uh, 80 business owners, people that could use accounting and not just sell accounting, but talk just about their business, about how they can increase their business and have a better home life. Is this really something that I want to do and miss something he's been working hard for? Luckily, I didn't have to make that decision because I'm not sure what I would do. But I would probably say yes. In this one particular case, what I would probably do is drive up to Mundelein, watch the first two morning games, Go from, and for those of you from out of town, Mundelein is, so here's Chicago, Mundelein is like over here. <laughs> so I'll drive out there, I will come in, I will do my presentation, probably half-ass, because I'll be partway there. Man, are they winning, are they losing, what's going on? And then as soon as I'm done here, hey, thank you, and then I'd be gone, and I would try to get to the championship game, because I know they're gonna be in the championship game. <laughs> yeah, it, to me, this is important, that's important, I would have to figure out a way to do it. It could be that you look at something like that and you go, you know what, the kid's only going to be, a, going to be in this, this once. He's only, he'll be in water polo, you're only going to see him play maybe 10 games for the rest of his life from here on out. I don't want to miss that. 
Bruce, is it okay if I do this next year? Or, you know, is there another time that I can do it? Can you, most people might understand. It's just like if you've got this really great appointment with somebody at 9 a.m. on a Friday, and then all of a sudden you get a call from your buddy saying, hey, we're going fishing, let's take Friday off, let's roll. What do you do? Well, and you can go fishing, or can you call up the guy, hey, you know, I, I hate to do this, I know it took a long time for us to schedule, but something else came up. I don't want to. I don't want to reschedule our meeting, but is it possible to do this on Tuesday, this date? Now you invite him to go fishing with you. There you go. Even better. That's how you, you do get that. Done. You can do that too. There's all kinds of different ways to be able to do this. Really, the key, what I'm trying to get reinforced into you, is schedule it. Schedule those times. Schedule things around it. And then when you are at that water polo tournament, the, the example that I'm using. Talk to people. You know, you, you've got the game. I can't interrupt my Cougar Polo. I can't interrupt that, but then the other team's playing. Who cares about them? So, <laughs> Jeff, what do you do again? You know, what kind of business are you in? You know, and it, it, it really does turn around and work out pretty okay. Everybody kind of understand that autonomy part, being in control of your brand. The other part of autonomy is, um, and Ryan said this in his presentation I thought was kind of funny. Um, he had the picture of him with the uh, uh, working on the computer and then uh, I was probably the only one that saw the stack of bills that were <coughs> behind him besides his wife. There are things that you're probably doing in your business that if you looked at your beliefs, your talents, your knowledge and skills, they're not listed there. Oddly enough, like paying bills like trying to figure out your cost segregation model for whatever Ryan was talking about. Like anything else that's been described throughout these, this, this weekend of work, that you're just like, I don't want to do it. I have no problem watching somebody do it, but I don't want to do it. I work for an accounting firm. Where are you? You know Bill Gallagher? He's, you know, he's the G of GLM. He can't believe that I'm coming out here to speak in front of a group of people. You're going to do what? I'm going to talk. You're going to talk about GLM? No, I'm going to talk about work life. You're not even going to talk about financials or anything like that? No. Oh my God, I'd rather die. And most people would. But what did he find? He found that when he didn't have a salesperson, new business didn't come into the firm because he loves working on taxes. <laughs> Other guys love analyzing financial statements. Other people love doing the stuff that you don't want to do and you're doing it anyway. Anybody seen the new QuickBooks commercials with Danny DeVito? You remember when you got that degree in taxation? No, it didn't happen. The idea is not for you to do hard work, it's for them to do the hard work. So finding things to delegate, what are they good at that they can take over? So here is gonna be, even though I've referenced GLM a few times, who's doing your accounting? Is it stacking up? Are you working all day trying to get that job out and then all that money is going to waste because you're paying late fees because the bills aren't getting done on time? There are small firms that can do the stuff you don't wanna do. My information is not at the bottom. <laughs> but that's the kind of stuff that if you don't want to do it, having the yin and the yang in your company, the guy that's the, the imaginative guy and the guy that works on the books, good idea. Sometimes the guy that works on the books is too expensive to the imaginative guy. Source that out. Get somebody else to do it. Have that conversation with your accountant, with the people that are good at that, what should I pay this person? How should I set up my commission structure? Those are the conversations you have with the people that are good at what they do. And then you stick to being good at what you do, which is awesome shirts, getting stuff on, uh, out on time, managing people, whatever it is that you do. Any other questions about the autonomy part? 
How many of you want to call GLM and have them do your accounting? Okay. Thank you. How many of you do networking? Business networking? So you all do networking? How many are in a uh, chamber of commerce? Pretty much all of you. So the way I describe networking and doing it strategically, there's networking wide and then there's networking deep. When you're networking wide, there's lots and whoops. There's lots and lots of people. When you're networking deep, there's fewer people, but more strong relationships. Okay? So when you're networking wide, the chambers of commerce are great. That's when you get to meet lots and lots of people. There's probably four or five screen printers that go to the after hours also. So you will walk, we'll work on differentiating yourself later. But hi, my name is, and you are, and the, 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 uh, the rigmarole of meeting somebody. But those are great. They get your name out there. Where are the shirts? When I was putting this presentation together, I know Steve over there from uh, Blink Tees met him just a few months ago, but I figured out what, this, what you guys were, eventually, <laughs> and I had him in mind doing this presentation. He's in two of the local chambers, he goes to them, he wears his Blink Tees t-shirts, um, he has a nice little presentation on what he does when they say, 30 second introduction, he's ready. He has a nice way of saying, I'm not, you know, he doesn't say I'm a screen printer. He says something cool that I suddenly can't forget because they're all staring at me. But those are the types of things you can do at, at Chambers of Commerce. How many of you are in like a weekly networking group? Like a B&I, something like that. So no competition among the members and the referrals. So it's still networking wide. I've seen BNI type chapters that have 65 members that all don't compete with each other. But there's no competition. So once you're the screen printer in the room, there's no others that are allowed. Yeah, there could be a paper printer, there could be some other folks that don't do exactly what you do. Or even they do, they just don't do it for that meeting. So it's still networking wide, just a little bit deeper. I'm sorry, I made this presentation. <laughs> I made this presentation in 2002. <laughs> this was really cool back then. <laughs> and then it came down and I can't, I try every time. I was over there trying because I heard some, one of the other presenters had something go on with their, and I'm like, oh, I gotta make sure. I turned off the volume, yet it still found its way up. Anyway, <laughs> professional organization. Other, you're doing that here. You're all competing with each other. You're all learning on how to grow your business. And yeah, there could be some business that comes out of it. You want, you, you know, there's somebody that maybe does, wants to do less quantities, and somebody that only does and has a minimum up here. You guys meet here, and now you're sharing referrals. I don't want to do the small ones. You can't do the big ones. We'll, we'll meet and we'll talk. Um, we were talking about, um, you know, if, you're, if your name is, uh, you know, printing or something like that, people might come to you, hey, I need business cards or I need forms. And, you know, instead of saying, oh, I don't do that, say, hey, I know at least two guys that can help you. And you give them their names, you walk them through it. Maybe they're doing the same thing for t-shirts. You really get to know each other at the professional organizations. But you also learn from each other. And then at the top, let's hope it doesn't explode, it's power teams. Power teams are people that work in the same type of business that you do, but don't compete. They work with the same type of clients that you do, but they don't compete. No, it's not all just in the print realm, but you're all business to business. You're trying to sell to businesses. Yeah, you've got some you know, family reunions, parties, things like that, but you're all trying to get business. So you want to network where there are other people going after business owners. So find those networking groups as well and go after you know, who they're going after. Have them be, uh, you're their top of mind as they're talking with their clients so that if they see a need of some kind, they can refer you. And that actually leads me into give people when you're networking something that somebody says that makes me think of you and your business. So parties, um, doing the t-shirts the for, for the teams, um, doing some of the different charity things. What is something that somebody said that would make me think, wow, they could sure use a 
a screen printer to print a whole bunch of t-shirts. Think about that, I'll let you write it down over in the networking portion. When you're networking, don't just make it the hi, my name is, and you are. Hey, if you hear somebody say, I never talked to my accountant, tell them about me. If you hear somebody say, we're having a family reunion, hey, ask them if they want some t-shirts, that's what I do. If you hear someone say, and that's how that, that works. When you're, somebody was talking about um, making uh, 100 telephone calls, cold calls a day. Who wants to make 100 cold calls a day? Really, not one? You can imagine. What if I asked you to make 10 telephone calls to those people that you met networking? And these, I keep doing this. It's a business card that you're holding. <laughs> <laughs> Those, those business cards generally will go on your desk and maybe they'll get into entered or something like that. How about a week from now just calling up, don't ask them for business. Nobody needs t-shirts ever, I promise you. All right, call them up and say, hey, we met at that after hours. If I recall correctly, you're a commercial banker. I do screen printing and t-shirts. We both work with business owners. I was hoping that if you ever hear of one of your business owners talking about doing an outing or an event, that you'll think of me. Oh, yeah, okay. You know what, we're, we're sponsoring this thing at the Rotary Fest and we probably could use some t-shirts with the, well, it's not on B anymore, Fifth Third logo on there. Uh, is that something you guys do? It, it always happens. I started doing this a year and a half ago, just calling up somebody saying, hey, I remember, we talked to your commercial banker, I'm in accounting. If you run into somebody whose financials are in disarray and crazy, hey, ha let us take a look at them and we can maybe help them. You know, that, that just happened. I'm not kidding. That just happened yesterday. Somebody came in, they had hand handwritten <laughs> financial statement and they really needed to put it together so that we can loan them some money. They're a good business, they just don't have the right you know, background for it became a client. I wasn't calling them asking for business. Works out very well. So that's your networking. Differentiation, that's your differentiating factor. You're not calling up asking for the business. You're calling up seeing how we can network. So you finish up that conversation about, um, hey, you're a commercial banker, I do screen printing. Uh, tell me more about the clients you work with. Yeah, uh, they were, you know, five million to 10 million in revenue. To, yeah, but what is something that they say where they think they, I, they might need a new banker? Well, you know, maybe they say they can't afford something. They can't afford, I need 10,000 shirts, I just can't afford to, to get them right now. Oh, well, if I've got clients, can I say, all of a sudden the conversation starts and you're passing referrals to them. What is the first inclination after they get a good piece of closed business and you got, I'm saying 10,000 shirts. I'm thinking that's a high number. Is it? It's a good deal? Okay. So you got the deal for 10,000 shirts. Um, what do they want to do? They want to repay that, that referral back to you. So the question is, as we're ending here, what do you say you do? When you're coaching, when you're providing free t-shirts and you're at these networking events, what's something that you could say that you do that's a little bit different? So I'm gonna ask you to stand up one more time. All right, about two minutes left. All right, the same people. <laughs> Try to change it up unless it was really good the first time. Go. Yeah, it was perfect. <laughs> So what do you think? This help you a little bit? Get a little bit more focused on both sides of it. Don't neglect your family while you're growing a business. Don't neglect your business while you're spending time with your family. Schedule everything in. Take advantage of those opportunities when somebody asks you what you do. Even if you're bored at a party, have something great to say. Take advantage of those opportunities when you're volunteering to you know, talk about your business and, and be able to pass business along and try to get, you know, some business out of those personal connections. So my information is at the bottom of those handouts. 
Those handouts are gold. They're worth millions of dollars if you work them correctly. Spend some time taking a look at those, at the, 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 um, the beliefs part of that. And if you have any questions about this, about the work-life balance, feel free to contact me. If you want to get rid of one aspect of your business that you don't have to think about, which is the accounting side of things, let me know. I can find somebody good that might be able to help you. See what I did there? Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, guys.